Hello, everybody. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today from Hyvee in well, all of Dane County. Uh, it's Andrea Miller. Uh, Andrea, welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for uh, being back on the show. And uh, you always give me some topics to choose from. And today I got a little selfish and, and picked one uh, to my flavor. Uh, but I think it's uh, it will be the time of year for a lot of gardeners out there when mm -hmm. they're thinking. Uh, and today we're talking about uh, flavor, spices, herbs, and pickling. I'm so excited for this. Yes. And also because I just uh, just went on a trip uh, and picked up a whole bunch of spices that are probably not so good for me. So it's like timely uh, in that fashion as well. So uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, for foremost uh, when we think of flavor, I just think you automatically think salt mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and thinking, well, you can't have too much salt, but uh, uh, overall, uh, what would you say to that point? Yeah, that's a good thing to bring up to start when we're talking about taste and flavor. Um, the one thing about salt is we can acquire, um, we acquire a taste for salt. So the good news about that is we can kind of desensitize our taste buds by cutting down on the amount of, amount of salt we use. And so we actually taste it when there's less of it. So um, we can kind of desensitize our taste buds. That's what that's doing. So the key with using salt with cooking is we use it with fresh foods. We use it when we're cooking kind of whole foods that don't naturally have salt in them to bring out the natural flavor in the food. We want to try to do that rather than using it to taste the salt itself. Well, then you don't tell my wife that because uh, I may have oversalted a few things uh, here and there, uh, but uh, a good, good piece to understand. Yes. Uh, as far as uh, spices go, what are we looking for when we're trying to find that awesome spice? I'm assuming yeah. it's less salt, more realness to it, I guess. Yeah. So the good news about spices and herbs is you really can't go wrong. So you are going to get some nutritional benefit, but really the main goal is to get you a flavor that you enjoy and that is pleasing to your palate. And that, that might take a little bit to play around with blends or to play around with different kinds of herbs and seasoning, but you really can't go wrong. There's really no bad spice. It's all a um, personal preference. Um, and kind of checking out different recipes. Um, we're including a couple links to give you some really good ideas for even making blends on your own, um, where you just blend just whole individual spices and put them together. And then also giving you ideas on what to use them on. So if you're roasting vegetables or use them on fish or chicken. So um, just to kind of flavor up foods that might be bland all by themselves. I, I guess turning back to, so if I'm looking for a grilling, uh, a, a grilling mixture, if you mm -hmm. will, that, that combines all these things, what would be your suggestion as a dietitian for picking those out? Do I look for like less, uh, less sodium or blah, less, S, uh, was it MSG, you know, like, oh. tell me uh, some of those things that stand out to you. If you're sure. going to pick that. Sure. So if you're doing an herb or a spice blend, there's a very good chance there's no salt at all in it. And so um, what you can do is you can kind of flip that over and look on the ingredient list and it'll say salt in the ingredients if it's been added. There will also be sodium in the milligrams on the label. So if you don't want to have salt in your herb blend or your spices blend, look for zero or a very low number in the milligrams by sodium and look to see that there's no salt in the ingredients then you can add your own salt to your preference, right? Um, if you're using just single herbs and single spices and combining them as you go, those again, aren't gonna have any salt in them. So you're kind of just blending as you go. So you're really just looking for what flavor do you want? Um, what kind of um, um, you know, uh, flavor profile are you looking for? And that's where it does take a little bit of practice. But again, we gave you some good places to start. Um, so you're not just testing from scratch and you can kind of see what appeals to you the most. So storage of, of these different mm -hmm. things are uh, probably really, I've got a whole uh, storage cabinet that you <laughs> open up and you're like, wow, it's always got a great fragrance. But yeah. uh, uh, tell us uh, about that. Uh, and sure. how long can you hold on to these spices? Sure, I'm sure. Check some of the dates on mine. Yeah, so there's a big difference between fresh herbs and our spices. So herbs are going to be like either the flowers or the plant or different, the fresh pieces of plants. So if you get them fresh, you can wrap them loosely in a damp paper towel 
um, put them in a zip top bag and keep them in that crisper drawer in your refrigerator. You can do that for up to two weeks. So you can kind of just snip a little bit off of it um, if you're not using the whole bunch in a recipe and keep it for about two weeks. Now, of course, if something's dried, um, it's gonna last a lot longer. So technically, um, it's six months, which seems like a very short period of time. If you think of how long you may have had things in your, in your cupboard. Um, but if they're whole, you're talking up to five years. So again, anytime we grind something, cause spices are usually, um, the, the seeds or the bark or, or those pieces of a plant. Um, and they will last a little bit longer, of course, than fresh herbs. Um, so you store them in a tight fitting glass jar um, in a dark place if you can so they're not exposed to light. And actually you wanna keep them away from heat. So we don't want them right on top of our stovetop. Um, so try to keep them in a cupboard um, nearby maybe, but um, keep them in a nice cool dark place and, um, and then they should, last for, they should last for at least six months if not longer. All right, now the big question here, mm -hmm. cooking with these things. Yes. One thing that always makes me upset is every time we get together for a cooking segment, I go home and I make these things. And A, I don't have the spices, uh, but you make things taste so good. So if if you're going to pick like, you know, your top four spices mm. that just, you just, it's your go-to, Andrea. Yeah. I mean, people want, this is the secrets that the show gets out. Uh, right. What are you going to pick out? Oh, am I going to give away my secrets? Top four. Yes, you are. <laughs> Top four would definitely be cumin, uh, cinnamon, chili powder, and dried coriander. Coriander. What is coriander? Yeah, dried coriander is actually dried uh, cilantro. It's the okay, seed gotcha. of cilantro. Mm -hmm. So I like to I like to have kind of a base of some dried um, spices, but then also mix in the fresh. So the dried spices are usually used while you're cooking. And very importantly, when you're using ground, they're very delicate. So um, this might sound kind of odd, but when you're cooking with it, you'll know you want to add it to the food. You don't want to add ground spices to just like a bare pan. Uh, for very long. So um, you want to add them to the food, stir for about 30 seconds, and then it's at the point before you might add some liquid. Um, what that'll do is it'll kind of toast the spices with whatever you're cooking, vegetables or meat or whatever, and then um, kind of lock that in before you add the liquid to the pan. There you go. You don't get secrets like that anywhere <laughs> else, folks. Uh, right there, Andrew Miller making it uh, awesome for you. Uh, finally, uh, quickly if we could just talk about pickling yes. uh because definitely a lot of people are uh, are getting things i'm seeing people uh, doing it now mm -hmm. uh, big time uh pickling in wisconsin or pickling uh, anything uh what what do you have for suggestions there? yes um so you don't have to do you don't have to take out the full you know hot butter bath to to do the jars you can do a quick pickling method with a simple brine adding fruit or vegetable um, to your jars and then you pour that brine mixture over and it can stay in your fridge for about two weeks. So great method for summer produce. Um, we have a lot of great ideas of combinations and a quick guide to do it either in our season magazine um, or online on our digital season magazine. Um, and we're gonna include the link to that to go right to that spot. Yeah, that's all great information, uh, Andrea. And yeah, it, it, as I've seen you do time and time again, you got to try these things, mm -hmm. you know, and um, you got the four, uh, you know, your four uh, secrets there of great uh, spices. <laughs> so we'll have to try those out for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, people do want to get a hold of you, ask more questions about uh, any of these uh, and more uh, topics. How can they find you? Uh, yep. So we're including our link um, that you can get online and um, connect with me via our virtual platform. Um, or directly via my email or uh, mobile line. All right. Well, my son's excited uh, to be a part of this segment. So I'm just going to cover this up right there. Uh, he likes the spices. I do too, Andrea. Thank you so much for your time. You're and welcome. we'll talk to you real soon. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, Andrew Miller, dietitian. Uh, check out the website, check the magazine, and certainly uh, you can set up a point with her and ask her uh, questions and she'll give you those secrets right there, just, just like she just did. So now you, now you know why you got to tune in uh, each and every time here on Talking Pittsburgh. Take a quick break. More to come. You are watching TF.